So we have a couple of properties of these dual norms. Um, the first is that um, let f be a prenom on R to the N. Then mod of Y transpose X is less than or equal to F of X F D of Y and it's also less than or equal to f d of x times f of y. So this uh, is a little reminiscent of uh, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, um, which uh, which says that mod of y transpose x is less than or equal to the L2 norm of x times the L2 norm of y. Um, it turns out that the dual norm of the L2 norm is the L2 norm itself. So when I when I consider f to be the L2 norm, which is and which is of course a vector norm, but it's also a pre norm, then uh, this these inequalities reduce to the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, and this is true for every x y belonging to R to the n. So, um, but this is a more general uh, inequality. Now, um, how do you show this? So, of course, if, uh, for example, x was equal to 0, then the left-hand side is 0. The right-hand side is also equal to 0 in either case. And so the inequalities uh, certainly holds when x equals 0. So, um, if x equals 0, so let x be non-zero. Then what we have is, <laughs> have is um, let me consider, um, consider the quantity y transpose x divided by f of x. Since x is not equal to 0, f of x is non-zero, so I can consider the vector x over f of x, and this is less than or equal to the max over all z such that f of z equals 1 of mod of y transpose z. Why is this true? Of course, this is equal to f d of y by definition. And the inequality immediately follows. So this implies, I'm just going to take this f of x to the other side. It's non, it's strictly positive. So mod y transpose x is less than or equal to f of x fd of y. But why is this inequality true? Uh, this is trivial. I, I just made the same argument. x over f of x is one such vector such that f of z equals 1. If I took f of x over f of x, I get, uh, I, I will get the value equal to 1. So it satisfies this constraint. And so here what I'm doing on the right hand side is I'm not restricting myself to x over f of x. Instead, I'm considering all possible z such that f of z equals 1 and I'm maximizing y transpose z. So any one, this is like one candidate solution to this optimization problem. And since this is maximizing this quantity, this has to be at least equal to its value at one of the feasible points. And so then that is equal to fd of y. Now the rest of the proof follows immediately because mod of y transpose x is equal to mod of x transpose y. And so I can just exchange x and y, and uh, then I will have uh, y transpose x magnitude is less than or equal to fd of x times f of y. So, um, so now that we've defined uh, dual norms, um, we can ask, uh, are there some 
uh, we, we looked at some examples of uh, norms and we can ask what are the duals of those norms. So um, uh, here is one, uh, one result um, which will help to answer that. If X and Y are vectors in R to the N, then mod of Y transpose X is equal to mod of sigma I equal to 1 to N, Y I X I, which is less than or equal to, I'll take the mod inside, that will only increase the value or it cannot decrease the value i equal to 1 to n mod of y i x i which is less than or equal to now what i can do is in this summation i can pull out the largest value of y and, um, and in magnitude and that will only uh, in other words all these y i's i'll replace with the biggest of these biggest of y1 through yn and so i and and then that is just some single number that's multiplying all these x's so i'll write it like this so max one less than or equal to i less than or equal to n mod yi times six i equal to and let me just write it with j so that you don't get confused. j equal to 1 to n mod xj. And this, uh, the, so the, and this is equal to, by definition, the max entry of, max modulus entry of y is what we call the infinity norm. And the sum of the magnitudes of x is what we call the L1 norm. So what we have is that y transpose x is less than or equal to y infinity times x l1. Okay, this is like a, similar to the, uh, the, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. There, the two norms being operated were the L2 norm and the L2 norm. Here I have the infinity norm and I have the L1 norm. Um, this is in fact a special case of um, of an inequality known as Holder's inequality. Which says that mod of y transpose x is less than or equal to norm x LP norm uh, times no, y LQ norm where P and Q are such that one over P plus one over Q equals one. So for example, if I choose P equals um, one, then I must choose Q equals infinity so that uh, one plus one over infinity, which is zero equals one. So it reduces to this inequality when I set P equals one. So the, the question now I can ask is if, uh, if I'm given Y, when will equality hold here? or for what x will equality hold? Okay, then for that you have to examine where we did this uh, inequalities here and ask when when will this uh, these inequalities hold with equality. Now, the, the when you take the modulus inside, this will be, this will hold with equality if each of these terms were already non-negative. And so then uh, there is no cancellations that are happening across the terms here. Uh, and so taking the mod inside doesn't really change this value. So the two will be equal. 
And so, um, uh, so, so this should be non-negative. And then when will this not affect it? It won't affect it if uh, the X is such that pulling out the maximum value of Yi doesn't affect this, uh, this overall summation. In other words, if X was chosen such that it has a non-zero entry only for the entry of Y, which solves this optimization problem. That is, suppose the first entry of Y was the maximum magnitude entry, then, then if only the first entry of X was non-zero and all other entries of X were equal to zero, then the other terms in the summation are not contributing to the sum anyway. And so then pulling out this maximum value, which is the first entry of Y, is not going to change the value of, uh, value of this quantity. I mean, these two will become equal. So, so, so basically, so, so, so suppose X was such that. Sir. Yeah. Alternatively, we can say that all the values of Y are equal. Will that make sense? No, uh, I'm saying Y is given. I'll come back to that. Uh, that's a good point. I'll come back to this point in a moment when I ask okay. the alternative question which is when given an X, when will the equality hold? Then the, your, your answer is absolutely right. You want to okay. choose all the values of Y to be equal. But uh, now I'm, I'm looking over all X's such that the L1 norm of X is equal to one. And I'm asking when will equality hold in, in here? Okay, sir, yeah. In this inequality. And uh, so if, uh, so the equality holds when xi equals one um, for i equal to the argument one less than or equal to k less than or equal to n that maximizes uh, mod yk and zero otherwise. Then um, so, so that is the X. In other words, what I have just done is I've actually solved the problem uh, of, I, uh, I've actually solved what is the maximum over all norm X L1 equals one of mod Y transpose X. So I'm given a Y, I'm asking what is this value? And this is equal to the max mag magnitude entry of Y, which is equal to norm Y infinity. But by definition, this is equal to the dual norm of uh, the L1 norm. So I'll write that as norm Y L1 dual. Uh, basically, the dual norm of the L1 norm is the L infinity norm. And similarly, I can ask the alternative question given. So in other words, what I'm trying to show you here is how to find the dual norm. OK, given a norm, we ask uh, uh, what is the dual norm of a given norm? This is how you solve it. So for given X, um, when will equality hold? And it holds when, again, suppose Y is such that Then, um, then basically, what I have to do is to choose x, uh, choose uh, y i is equal to x i over mod x i for every i such that x i is not equal to zero. And if x i equals zero, um, it's eventually going to multiply with zero anyway. But I can choose it to be zero otherwise. I can choose it to be any value less than one in magnitude, but uh, because the the y infinity is bounded by one, so I shouldn't choose a entry of y to be greater than one, but I can choose it to be zero otherwise. Then this implies y infinity 
the dual norm, which is equal to the max over all x such that x infinity equals 1 of mod y transpose x. Now, if I substitute this yi into that summation above, I, you can see that this is equal to the mod xi will cancel with the mod xi. And so you'll be left with summation of mod xi. And so this is equal to norm y l1. So the dual norm of the L infinity norm is the L1 norm. Okay, so specifically what did I do here? I'll just repeat this um, for the sake of clarity. What I did was uh, recall that the, by definition, the dual norm is like this. If I want to find the dual norm, I want to find I want to solve this optimization problem. Maximize y transpose x magnitude subject to f of z equals 1. So I can choose this f to be some particular norm or a pre-norm and I can ask what is the dual norm. In order to find this, again, I have to solve this optimization problem. Now, one typical trick in solving optimization problems is to find an upper bound on the cost function and try to see if there is a z satisfying the constraint where you actually achieve this upper bound. If you can find an upper bound, so suppose I could find some, some uh, so if there exists some, say, zeta such that mod y transpose z is less than or equal to zeta for all z, such that f of z equals 1. Then if and uh, if there exists some z prime such that mod y transpose z prime is equal to this zeta, then this quantity, uh, then then, uh, then um, zeta is the dual norm. So that is uh, that is the process I'm trying to follow here. What I'm what I did first is I found an upper bound on mod y transpose x in terms of the L1 norm of x and the infinity norm of y. Okay, and so then if I restrict the L1 norm of x to be equal to one, then I know that mod of y transpose x is less than or equal to norm uh, the L infinity norm of y for all y. Then I ask, can I ever, uh, can I achieve this upper bound? Yes, answer is yes, I can achieve this upper bound of norm y infinity if I choose um, x such that xi equals 1 for the argument i which maximizes mod yk and 0 otherwise. And this in turn shows that the dual norm of the L1 norm is equal to the L infinity norm of Y. And similarly, if I restrict the norm Y to be Y infinity equal to one, then I ask whether this mod of Y transpose X can ever be equal to the L1 norm of X. This is the upper bound for norm Y infinity equal to one. And I find that the answer is yes. If I just choose YI equal to XI over mod XI, then if you look at what happens to y transpose x, that becomes summation yi, it's, it's summation of yi xi, but yi itself is xi over mod xi times xi, i equal to one to n. And uh, this is uh, uh, xi times xi over mod xi is, so this is equal to um, summation i equal to one to n mod xi. <coughs> okay, so because this is xi square and I can also write that as mod xi square and that divided by xi is just mod xi and which is in turn equal to the L1 norm of x. 
And as a consequence, the dual norm of the L infinite norm is the L1 norm. Similarly, if I take the L2 norm, then I have from Cauchy Schwartz. mod y transpose x is less than or equal to norm y l2 times norm x l2 and equality if and only if x and y are dependent or x is equal to some alpha times y. So in particular if uh, if y is non-zero then x choosing x to be equal to y over the l2 norm of y satisfies x l2 norm equals 1 and so uh, so this quantity it, it will end and it solves max norm x l2 equals 1 mod y transpose x. So that implies the dual norm is equal to the L2 norm itself. So we say that the L2 norm is itself dual. In fact, it is the only norm that ha has this property. Sir, in the previous one, uh, the dual norm of y uh, infinity should be x, uh, norm of y x1, no? Or should be y1? The previous uh, equation, uh, dual norm of y infinity should be uh, one norm of x, no? Not y. No, no, no. See, when I have an optimization problem like this, the solution to the optimization cannot contain x. I've already searched over all possible x's and I'm asking what is the maximum value of this. It will only depend on y. There is no meaning to writing the dual norm of y as something that depends on x. x is, x is like a, a local variable to this optimization problem. It is the only norm which is self-dual. Um, another, uh, so this is also something that can be shown. I won't show it here, um, but it can be shown. Uh, so if you take, uh, if you start from the property that uh, the dual norm of a given norm is equal to the norm itself. You can then derive and show that that norm must be the Euclidean norm. Um, and also uh, another property is that the dual norm of the du uh, uh, of the dual norm of a vector norm. So we start with the norm, we find its dual norm, and then we ask what is the dual of that dual norm. And you see from these two examples that if I started with the L1 norm, the dual of that is the L infinity norm. Then if I asked what is the dual of the L infinity norm, I get back the L1 norm. Here also in the second example, anyway, if I take the dual norm of the Euclidean norm, I get the Euclidean norm. Then if I ask what is the dual of that, it is again the Euclidean norm. And this property is uh, true for all norms. Um, so the uh, dual of a, uh, of a dual norm of a vector norm is the vector norm itself. So you can't go on producing new norms by uh, finding the dual of the dual of the dual and so on. You can do two of them and that's it. You stop there. Yeah, what is the question? Yeah, the, my question is, uh, should 
uh, you taken a norm should the dual norm always exist i mean for any norm do we have a dual norm for it yes so essentially the point is you are maximizing a linear which is a convex function over a compact set so it will always have a maximizer within that compact uh, set and so the dual norm always exists it may not always be easily computable you may need to solve an optimization problem like this in some special cases like the ones we considered it's possible to work out what is the solution to this optimization problem but that need not always be the case and so one more doubt in the lp norm that we have defined can p be any rational number or should it be only a positive integer it can be any number yeah any rational number it can even be an irrational number okay then, uh, one of the follow up questions sir so mm -hmm. can i so given a uh, norm say lp norm uh, mm -hmm. can i say that uh, its dual norm will be an lq norm where p and q satisfy the holder inequality uh, is it, is it necessary so. Uh, i think so but i need to double check that um yeah so this inequality itself suggests that that uh, uh, the, the, this inequality is holder's inequality it's a generalization of the cauchy schwarz inequality and for a given x such that x lp norm equals 1 if you ask what is the sorry for a <coughs> excuse me for a given y if you fix x such that x lp norm equals 1 and then you ask among all such vectors whose lp norm equals 1 when can the maximum of y transpose x be attained and uh, if you solve that optimization problem um you will find that the maximum will be attained at an x such that the value of y transpose x equals this upper bound which is the lq norm of y where yeah. q is a number such that 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1 so those are not that easy to show algebraically um but it is possible to show that and therefore the dual norm of the lp norm where p is any number between 1 and infinity is the lq norm where q is the number satisfying this in this equality here 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1 yes okay okay that was my doubt okay yeah. thank you